Hello, Richard, all there. Hello, Francesca, nice to see you. Uh, Alan, Gabriel, hello, Gabriel. Hey, Ron, Holly, hello, Holly. Hi, Gigi, Isaac, hello, Isaac. Hi, George, hello, Diana. So lovely to be with you. Just a, a couple of words on, uh, usually we start this meeting with a, a short meditation, or the guided meditation, and then we, we can have a discussion, questions, whatever. Um, and this meeting is recorded, by the way. <clears throat> so you know, to start with, maybe we could uh, sit comfortably and uh, uh, turn our attention inward. and uh, welcome uh, our experience freshly. Whichever way our experience is appearing, the sound of the birds, the breath. Very gentle movement of the breath. Whatever thoughts may appear, to remain as you are, without an interest in seeking any particular experience or any particular uh, mind state. Each moment is a fresh moment. Of presence. transparent effortless the peace of being And there is no one doing anything. The sun, the sun shines of its own. It shines as I, meaning I, this aware presence, (laughs) 
appear, appearing as hearing, hearing these words, appearing as the sensation of your feet on the ground. Appearing as the sound of traffic. Appearing as the gentle vibration of the body. Universal vibration. in the freshness of this moment, in the freshness of each moment, all is well. Because there is no need to achieve anything. Because in the true moment, there is no time. It's the eternity of being, of awareness. So we don't need to hold on to any images about ourself or about others. Because this images are empty. They have no real significance. And these images are not true. Because our true meeting is beyond images. It's a, a meeting of love. The meeting of reality meeting itself. Truth meeting itself. Love meeting itself. So living the non-dual understanding is living peace, living freedom, living 
oneness, living the eternity of being. Rather, rather than living the story, the story about me, about you, the story about life, rather than living as an entity in, in time and space, as a woman, as a man, as a person, we live as reality, the reality of universal consciousness, universality of being. We simply need to let go of any self-definition, letting go of the def definition of others as well. So there can be a fresh meeting, a fresh moment of being. because our stories about ourselves and our stories about others are like dead corpses. Which we drag along. It's, it's strenuous. Complicated. Whatever we are protecting is just a, a ghost, an illusion, an illusion protecting itself. Like somebody wearing a mask and then wearing another mask too cover the previous mask, a life of, of masks, what for? Where is, where is the love and the beauty and the freedom in wearing a mask? Hiding, protecting what? Everything around us is flowing, the wind, the sky, the clouds, waves on the surface of the ocean, the heartbeat. The universal pulsation, universal manifestation. And we are not apart from that.
Okay, so if you uh, have anything that you would like to explore, to share, to look into, <laughs> we could. Uh, Rock and roll. <laughs> so any any questions or any thing to say to share? Thank you, Magdi. I could so much relate when you spoke about the corpses. Like we carry the corpses. We don't, I, I can relate to this. I spent a lot of time with this and it just, it was a really a precious point. Mm, yeah. 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 This luggage, the luggage of the the backpack, full of full of stories and beliefs and memories and guilt and all sorts of stuff we 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 carry around. Yeah, it's unnecessary. I think the corpse metaphor is a good one. <laughs> so if I believe to see something in a friend, then I can only release it in myself. I don't need to speak out. I don't need to. Yeah, yeah. In a way, uh, Everything that appears to us uh, is appearing a hundred percent to us, to to I, you know, I awareness, I intelligence, I presence. So it's fully available to me, a hundred percent. You say, but oftentimes uh, we have conditions. So I'm available for the sweet stuff, the good stuff. But anything that, whatever my conditions are, anything that doesn't fit my conditions, then I'm, I'm not fully available to it. I'm rather available to blaming you or blaming my mother or blaming the government or whatever, blaming God, you say. So in full availability to, to your experience, there's, not, there's no possibility for blame or there's no possibility for any sort of evasive, evasive, evasive action. Because full availability is, is consuming, it completely consumes your attention, you see. But for full availability, it's not possible to have a, your conditions your conditions upon your experience. So it, it should be this way, or the world should appear that way, or she should not be this way, or he should not talk to me this way. So these conditions, they limit your, your capacity to be fully present to your experience, which is 100% yours, right? It's, it's appearing fully to you, whichever way it's appearing to you, it's fully, it's, it's a, the whole, the whole painting is there for you. It's it's not it's it's not incomplete. <laughs> it's 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 not lacking anything. But but when we are trying to protect, when we're trying to protect something or somebody, then then we have we've built some we've built some walls and this side is okay that side that side is not okay you say so we are we are in a divided we, we, in inner the inner inner 
inner division. But in the moment, in the in the in the moment, I can I can perceive if uh, there is a loving presence, or if if there is a, a a reason for me in this moment to sort of protect and defend, because there may be a reason. You may run into somebody who has has an issue, has some issue with you out of wherever they're coming from. But it's, it's always in the, in the moment. And even, even the desire or wish to assist someone is also a barrier. It depends, you know, it depends where you are coming from. If you are coming from a, uh, an impersonal place, a, a, a place of, of love, you know, that somehow it's coming through you, not from the, your person. You're not trying to improve your personhood, but mm. there, is, there is love flowing through you or this, this feeling to, to extend a hand to, you know, it's, it's coming through you from, from, from your heart, from your love. No, then it's perfect. It's good. It's it's a flow. It's it's a, it's like the water comes out from the spring and and it's refreshing. So we drink it. You know, it's it's just flowing. It's there isn't a personal spring. The spring that's flowing is it's it's a universal consciousness that's a, that's flowing as a spring and that's you know uh, uh, quenching the thirst of. Of the of the people and the animals, so it depends where you're coming from, Holger. If you're coming from, I know, or I'm a helper. You know, I had this vasana for many years. You know, being the helper <laughs> took me 15 years to get beyond it. You know, <laughs> so you have to sort of take a take a look. You know, and and be a, be. Uh, interested to to genuinely see something about yourself even if it's not something that you that you like even if it's something that that you really don't want to see but still you're 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 interested in seeing even the things about yourself that you don't like about yourself because then then the they arise, they arise to the surface rather than continue to be, to be uh, so I could be the helper or the teacher. That's an image. Sure. You know, but, but yet you can share, but not out of an image, not like I'm, I'm a teacher, I know, or I'm the helper. Because we are all interconnected. We all, we breathe the same air. We, we, we're, subject to the same gravity so we we're already helping being helped and so we're, we're, we're part of the same vibrational field it's interactive you know it's interactive it's not separate you know like a, like the positive and the negative pole they're they're interacting is the negative helping the positive or, or the positive helping the negative right and it's, it's there isn't such a thing. It's just it's helping its itself. <laughs> so when you're when you are helping like that, like like it's helping itself, then that's that's a good helping because it's not coming from your personhood, right? Absolutely, yes. So it's always a, it's a win-win because um, we have the same interest. Yes, yes, there is winning in giving and there is winning in receiving, you know, as a way of speaking. I mean, I mean yeah, there is, there is love in giving and love in receiving. Wonderful. Thank you, Magdi. Yeah, and in a way, our meetings are like that. Huh? Yes. I, feel, I feel like 
it's there isn't you know there isn't a fixed place where the positive is and a fixed place where the negative is they, they it's it's a field i just observed this in myself for years i just used like spiritual concepts non-dual concepts like a shield i mean it was just uh, i don't know Mm -hmm. to say it but it was more like an escape to have some like have a little resting place a little island in my thinking well in a way uh, presence or being which is not personal it's universal presence universal being is one could say it is a resting place. Sure. It's 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 restfulness. It's, it's restfulness itself. You know what I mean? Is there is no because presence is has no opposite. It's not my presence, Europe. There is no demarcation line anywhere between my presence, your presence, that there's no such thing, it's just presence. In presence and as presence, it's one unif unif unified field. So there is no opposite, so it's restful. Yes. And the I, the, the I, the sense of myself is, is that that rest, restful presence. So, so we can sort of contemplate that, contemplate this restful presence as myself, N not as the body or as an object, as my as myself in a in a in a broad broad meaning of of the term myself. Absolutely, yes. And and this restfulness is not disturbed by speaking, by the activities of the senses, the activities in the world. This restfulness is not disturbed because there isn't a separate separation between presence and the world. You follow? Yes, absolutely. Yes, I do. I hear you. Because uh, the world is is made out of presence. Yes, and the me, the unhappiness, the me, the unhappiness is just a hanging on to some old ideas. Yeah, the, the unhappiness uh, is feeling contracted, feeling separate. So when, when presence, which is borderless, impersonal, is mistaken to be some form, a limited form or a limited object or a limited concept. So, so presence, when we say presence, we're talking about awareness, I, I presence, not some concept of presence. Our direct experience is the experience of presence. So when when this experience of presence becomes somehow an object, phenomenal, like now presence is sitting on a chair, <laughs> for example, you know, when presence becomes a form, a woman, a man, somebody or something, then, then, there, is, then there is experience of presence and, and beyond presence, presence and something else. So 
So now there are two. There is presence and something else. There are two. And I am, I am a part of the two. I am not both. I'm, I am this presence sitting on the chair. And beyond, beyond this presence, which is sitting on the chair, there is whatever, the world, the other reality. So, so now there is a sense of lack, a inc incompleteness. In a way, incompleteness and the sense of lack is synonymous to unhappiness. And uh, the unhappiness is calling us to get beyond this separation because we don't like unhappiness. No one, no one likes unhappiness. So unhappy, and the unhappiness is calling us to, to see beyond this, this personal presence and to understand that this, in fact, presence is non-phenomenal, it's not, it's not limited. So then we return, then we, we, we go from I presence is this woman or this man, this mother or father, whatever, this person. So we go from this sense and belief that this presence is in a form to the actual reality of our experience this moment, which is that presence is, is formless, right? Right now in our experience, presence is formless. It's real, absolutely real. Because you cannot, if you get rid of presence, what remains? If you get rid of awareness, what remains? So we know, we know it's absolutely real. And if we take a look at that reality in this moment, we don't find any limits or any location or any localization to presence. What we find is pure presence and we also find thoughts, sensations, perceptions. And then there is an interpretation of the mind. The interpretation of the mind varies, varies. From the, from the non-dual understanding, the mind is at rest. It is not interpreting. The fact that it's not interpreting, it doesn't mean it's stupid. It, it knows when there is rain, it, it uh, closes the windows. When, uh, when there is hunger, it, it uh, cooks, it, it cooks a lunch or dinner. But a mind that is at rest does not mean no activity. It means no psychological activity, but there is activity, a universal activity, and, and the body-mind is not separate from the universe. You follow? Yes, I follow. Ron, you're right. If you can remember it or forget it, it is not you, therefore discard it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> nice. Yes. Yes. Uh, 
yeah, that's an interesting. Uh, in fact, you know, in remembering, meaning, meaning a certain thought appears right now. A thought appears right now about uh, my grandmother. <laughs> yes, my grandmother. She used to give me lots of kisses. She used to hold my face and kiss me, kiss me like 20 kisses. I was a young boy. It was, oh my God, I almost suff suffocating. But she, she loved to do that. So there is a, a, an image, a memory that arises in this moment. In this moment. Like this perception right now arises in this moment. But what is the you that perceives the quotes unquote memory? That you is universal awareness. And the you is it. The you meaning universal awareness, the reality that perceives right now is it. And this it is not separate from the perception. Or I would say the perception is not separate from the it. Like the, the it, the awareness, is like a like the water and the perception is like a wave or, or the water particles becoming gas or vapor or ice. A better metaphor is you dream in your night dream. Whatever you perceive in your night dream is not separate from you, the dreamer. If you're dreaming, you are in Hawaii. Those images and the, the blue ocean and the beautiful trees and volcanoes, their reality is not in, in the image, it's in you. You, the dreamer, you are creating them and perceiving them simultaneously. So memory is a, a current way in which awareness is appearing right now, out of itself, to itself. There isn't an actual past outside of consciousness. So consciousness is a, the constant the constant uh, across time and space. But time and space is just this one perception right now. That's, that's time and space. Uh, but in this moment, uh, thought appears as the time. For example, the image of my grandmother, you see, as a thought, then there is time as an impression. And space, space appears to us as perception in this moment, perception. So like the door is over there, the, the bed is over there, the plant is over there. That's in the perception. All of it is, uh, is uh, right in this moment of eternity and infinity of, of presence. And the, and the peace is in this understanding that 
I is uh, the reality that is one reality in this I, the reality that perceives right now, is a non-dual, non-dual. Is there is no nothing lacking in reality. Everything that we experience that is lacking is uh, men, mind, images, thoughts. Oh, I don't have a beautiful diamond ring. Oh, I don't have a, a, a big house. Or these are thoughts. And and the 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 unhappiness is because you believe that in fact you are a person. Because a thought is neutral. It's like a, a sound wave or, or, or a, a, a brain wave. A thought is some sort of brain wave. Right? I mean, you know, why not? It's a neutral event, right? It's, a, it's like a vibrational field. Right, but but the belief that that I am somebody, that belief then gives gives uh, the spice. It brings the spice to the thought. It's like now it's no longer a neutral thought because we've added a lot of Tabasco sauce, and now it's burning. It's that belief that. I am somebody. Because as soon as I am somebody, then I am missing. The, the I as a person, as a separate person, and missing or desire or sense of lack are uh, brother and sister. They like travel together. This is why Francis always encourages us to, to explore or inquire into the belief that I the reality that perceives right now is a limited, mortal, limited and dependent on the body-mind. Separate consciousness. So all of it is a gift. All of it is a gift. We are not doing anything. I mean, it's just living itself. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean if you take a look at this moment, it's amazing. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. It, it's a, a moment of wonder. And the wonder is the wonder of consciousness, that, that there is consciousness, that there is awareness. I mean, that's, that's, yeah, that's mind-blowing, isn't it? <laughs> it is mind-blowing. <laughs> yeah. that, that, you know, like sometimes... I remember when I was a young boy, I would, I would ask, oh my God, like, what am I, or what's going on, or what is this, you know? I was young, you know, but, but now I can understand what is this means, like my, the, the, the wonder of awareness. The wonder of awareness. Yeah, it's, it exists. The biggest gift of them all, you know? The gift, the gift from itself to itself, I mean, Yes, so there is, there is a sort of a, a tremendous joy, but it's not like a joy where you're jumping up and down. Ooh. Sometimes you can jump and down, up, jump, jump up and down. It's okay, but it's a joy, the joy that is cannot be disturbed. You see, the undisturbable joy. You know. The 
causeless, the causeless joy. And it's sufficient unto itself, you know. Because from the mind perspective, the mind is always saying, what's next, what's next, what's next? What's next, what's next? <laughs> it's always operating from something is lacking. You see? Uh, so when we are operating from something is lacking, there's always what's next. What is going to fulfill me? Oh, maybe I need to travel or maybe I need some more sex or maybe I need some better food or maybe I, I need a bigger house, whatever. The mind is, or oh now I have yeah, and that's and that's where Riz comes to play. Okay, I think I'm gonna no need to unmute me. Come on. Okay, I think I'm, I'm, I removed Adam Jeffrey. So back to <laughs> uh, sometimes we have visitors. They come, you know, from other planets. You know, they land, they land on the planet, and they very quickly they want to download their intelligence. <laughs> We have to be grateful for their visit, but a short visit. Yeah. Well, I'm talking, I'm talking too much. And any anybody else wants to say something? So I'll uh, I'll uh, ask a question. Oh yes, hey Ron, yes. Okay, so uh, last um, two or three years uh, since the COVID started, uh, particularly, I've been immersing myself in um, Nisa Gadarta's version of non-duality, reading his books, etc. And um, one of the things that he says is uh, it seems to be pretty unique because I've, um, though I'm, it may be there and I didn't hear it before. Because I've, you know, I've explored a lot of different teachings, but um, what he says basically is, um, of course, words and concepts, you know, they're all dismissive, but they're also what we have to work with. So, in in the context of, you know, our ignorance and working with words and concepts, he he often makes the distinction um, between consciousness and awareness. I'll, I'll state it very briefly and then ask you what you think of it. And ba basically, he says that it, what we normally refer to as consciousness, I'm conscious right now, it can be equated to I am, I am conscious at this moment. And he said that uh, basically, it's still a state of duality. Okay. Is it beyond or prior to consciousness or uh, what holds consciousness or however, you know, awkwardly or poetically you could put it, it's held in awareness, which is non-dual. And what he said is that when ultimately um, you go through the whole process of not this, not this, and you're left with just the... Um, the sort of the naked I am, uh, and then that naked I am goes, that consciousness, that subject object goes, what is left is your true self, that pure awareness beyond subject and object. So he would say when the consciousness goes, I'm oversimplifying it to make the point and ask the question, when consciousness itself goes, what's left is awareness. So that when we normally converse, say, on these non-dual uh, meetups, um, rarely do I um, see a distinction made between uh, uh, consciousness and awareness are constantly being conflated one with the other. And um, I, I, I find it very useful to hold one term for, for one, what I have to say is a concept at this point, and the other word for a different concept. What what do you think of that? Yes. So, uh, Ron, because you 
you are sort of you know new to to our meetings you know the time you know time has been meeting for a few years now um uh in our meetings uh i use the term consciousness and awareness uh, synonymously i am quite familiar with the nisarga data's uh teaching i am that and uh, various other uh teachings that uh were uh, translated by uh, Jean, John Dunn and others, uh, or Jean Dunn and others. Um, and uh, uh, there are possibly, uh, I don't follow other teachings, but there are possibly other teachings that do make the, the distinction that uh, Nisargadatta uh, makes between the term uh, consciousness and, and awareness. Um, now, but, the, but there is relevance to your question, definitely. I, I understand your question, but I'm going to have, I'm going to answer it using, you know, uh, my lingo in a way, and hopefully we can, we can get to some clarity together here. Um, <clears throat> so, just another small note. In in uh, uh, certain languages, uh, I know that for in at least in French and there may be other languages. I'm certain they don't have two words, you know, uh, like we have in English between uh, the term awareness and the term consciousness. In French, they say la conscience. Uh, la conscience uh, it, it means it means consciousness, but it, there is no word. For for awareness, Nisargadatta uses the term you know consciousness in referring to to body mind being being conscious of being conscious of uh, the, the body being conscious or um, uh, uh, being uh, consciousness as as thought and 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 uh, and perceptions and sensations. Uh, so he he uses the term consciousness. On occasion, because sometimes he flips it, uh, or uh, most often he uses the term consciousness referring to what I use the term sentience, sentience, sentience uh, which are qualities of the body mind, attributes of the body mind. The body mind can be uh, sentient. There are different degrees of sentience. Uh, for example, if you if you uh, have been hit on the head, you know. Uh, uh, with, with a with a rock, uh, the the sentience of the body, at least the way I use the term, is different from uh, if you, for example, have not been hit on the head, or the sentience uh, of the body mind is different uh, uh, before drinking one pint of tequila and uh, quite different after drinking one one pint of uh, of tequila, uh, while he uses the term awareness in referring to that which is beyond, at least in Sagarata, to that which is beyond consciousness. The, in my lingo, would be like the reality of, of, uh, of uh, consciousness. He uses the term awareness as being that which is uh, beyond the, uh, the, 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 the term consciousness. Uh, I, I I have over the past discouraged people to sort of get into the Nas the um, uh, uh, way of 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 speaking it simply because most of the teachings that I'm aware of, and again my awareness is limited, most of the teachings that I'm aware of do not make this distinction between uh, awareness and consciousness. So it's really hard uh, to find a living teacher. That uh, that uses the the language that um, that Nisargadatta uses, uh, I definitely don't. Now, uh, if you look at your experience right now, okay, right now there are perceptions, sensations, the sensation of your feet on the ground. You're perceiving a perception. You're hearing these words. If you turn your attention to the body, you notice the breath. These are, this is your experience right now. Plus, 
in your experience right now, there is that which perceives, which we refer to in English as I. Whatever it is that perceives is present right now. It is real. If you remove whatever it is that perceives, then the experience is, you can't even speak of an experience. So our experience is made out of two, experientially, two aspects. That which is perceives, whatever that is, thoughts, perceptions, sensations, memories, feelings, and that which perceives. Is there anything else? Okay, it, I failed to see what else. There is that which is perceived and that which perceives. Let's putting it simply. So you can call, you can, and that's what we do here, by the way, in our meetings. We call that which is perceived mind, meaning not only thoughts and memories and but also perceptions and sensations. So we use the I use the term mind in a more global sense than just thoughts. So I refer to that which is perceived as mind. And I refer to that which perceives as reality, presence, being, God, consciousness, Awareness, Atman, Allah, Shiva, the Absolute. I do mix the terms, but most often I use the term reality, consciousness, awareness. Again, in my language, I don't distinguish between consciousness and awareness or presence, being awareness. These are the terms that I use. I use those terms, I change the terms because I don't want to get married to one term or who is the dogma, you know, one term. It, it doesn't matter. Some people use the term God in religious ways. Some people use the term uh, uh, Shiva or the divine reality or universal reality. It's okay. As long as we are not getting wrapped up in the words, as long as we are, we are, we're clear about what we're talking about, we're talking about ex our experience being composed of mind, whatever it is that we perceive, and the reality that perceives. So I don't make a distinction between that which is perceived and then awareness and then further beyond that consciousness. Now, in terms of the neti neti, in the contemplation, the process, the, in general, like as a model, the contemplation starts with, I am this person, and the world is out there. I am this person, I am this, this, these thoughts, I am a mother, I'm a sister, I'm a father, whatever. And then we look at the neti neti process, and via the neti neti process, we come to realization, no, I am not the thoughts that I perceive. No, I am not the, the images that I perceive. No, I am not the perceptions that I perceive. We arrive at some point via the neti neti process. We arrive to, I am consciousness. The way I, I word it, I am consciousness slash awareness. But, but there is still, there is still the sense, the feeling that this consciousness awareness is personal and limited. So there is a further inquiry. The further inquiry is in the investigation into the belief and the feeling that this consciousness, consciousness slash awareness is limited. On what basis, what is the evidence 
that it is limited, that is local, that is personal, that is uh, 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 finite. And upon this investigation, this inquiry, we arrive at the understanding that no, consciousness is not personal, not limited, not local, non-phenomenal, and absolutely real. So then we have gone from I am somebody to I am nobody, I am just this consciousness, which is still personal, to a step beyond that, this consciousness is universal. So we go from I am somebody to I am nothing, and eventually to I am nothing and everything. Uh, so that was a long-winded response <laughs> to your question. I hope I didn't. Uh, this, I is didn't. Book, this is the book that I was reading this morning. Can you yeah. read the title? <laughs> nothing is everything. Yes, I, I can read it. Yes, nothing is everything. <laughs> it sort of, you know, it summarizes everything you said. I think. Yes. Nothing is everything. Yes. And it doesn't, uh, it's, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not um, rigid and it's not a question of terms, but it is a, a thing uh, of um, realizing, um, as you said, towards the end, that as you get to this point of having reduced it to this uh, consciousness slash awareness, um, there's still something that's back even prior. So if you want to use a Sanskrit word, uh, usually it's uh, para Brahman, the supreme Brahman, nirguna Brahman, Brahman without any qualities, conditions. But again, they're just, you know, they're, they're Sanskrit terms. If, if the Eng English terms, you know, um, are not uh, suitable, and as, as you say in French, they don't even discriminate uh, between that. But it's not a question of language or words here, right? It's beyond, yeah. it's beyond all, because words, concepts, these are things we remember and we can forget. This is not the reality, right? So um, uh, we use these things though to, as pointers, right? Um, and uh, as far as uh, this, this, this distinction not uh, usually being found, I mean, he was a very recent sage. I mean, he died in 1981. His teaching is almost uh, exact as uh, Ramana Maharshi, who dated by roughly one lifetime, you know. And so this is a very, um, um, I would say, current, you know, modern um, interpretation. Nisargadatta? Yeah. Yeah, but right, right. Nisargadatta's, you know, teaching, his live teaching was available to, to a few people and uh, in the process uh, of uh, translating and translation in general, there are two, there are two main obstacles. Uh, one is the language itself, uh, to the rendition, the exact rendition of the of what the, the teacher was saying. Secondly, the understanding of the translator. Um, so best, you know, I I always uh, I, I have great honor and respect for uh, Ramana and Sagadatta and you know Jean Klein and other teachers. But if if at all it's possible to work with a with a living teacher. That's that's my that's my recommend, recommendation. But but just coming back to what you said, on you, you're right. The arriving to the understanding that I am nothing, meaning in, via the neti neti process, there is something beyond that. But I wouldn't, in my language, I wouldn't say what is beyond that is a param atman or whatever. I say what there is beyond that is is the is the realization that that consciousness is not personal and limited. It's much more direct. It's the inquiry into on what basis, yes, now that you know that you are con consciousness, on what basis do you, what supports the feeling and the belief, more the feeling that this consciousness is personal and limited. Well, the way the way he also put it very simply, he he said that um, 
all you can do really is, is say what you're not. You can't say what you are other than possibly indicating it in, in negative terms, but you can't, you can't really say what you are, but you can say what you're not. And I think of, 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 uh, for me, I find the life journey is uh, very much uh, um, has to do with discovering what I'm not. Yeah, that's fine. That, that sounds good to me. But uh, uh, I'd like to also share that what you are is that which is saying whatever is being said right now. That's the second half. First, you do an 1880, which is as I described it. And then uh, the other half of the coin is Tatwamasi. Thou art that. You are everything. There is nothing other than you, right? But you, I, if I say that now, it's just, uh, it's just words, thoughts, concepts. Uh, it's not realized yeah, in the what, moment. What, what, matters, what matters is, is the, like, like Atmananda Menon, you know, uh, said that you arrive to, to, you can call it an understanding, uh, an experiential understanding where no uh, world event, no situation in the body, no mind activity, takes you away from the peace of being, from the causeless peace of being. Yes. Any, any other questions or anybody has anything to share? Okay. Well, very lovely. Gabriel, nice to see you. And, and Francesca it was a really wonderful time, you know, together and really so beautiful. We really enjoyed, you know, our friendship and our company. And uh, yes. So thank you. Thank you all, Holger and Holly. Lovely to see you, Holly and George. Hola, Maria. Como esta, Maria? Hi. And Ron, thank you, Ron. And Irena, hello, Irena. Hola, Isaac, Commissar Isaac, and Diana. Thank you all. Lovely to see you. Okay, okay, bye. Friendship. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye. Good afternoon. Bye.